pop it in, ladies and gentlemen. It's Monday evening. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, this is Kevin Rankin, All Access Live. Tonight is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. I just had a, a chat with uh, my guest and buddy tonight, and uh, he already had me in tears, so this is going to be good stuff. I want to, first of all, thank my buddies at Five Star Guitars for sponsoring this show from the very beginning. If you're interested in playing guitar, not only do they have a great selection of guitars, they have lessons available. You can get lessons from the pros. They've got repairs, so you can get all your repairs done as well. If you are looking online and you have some of those big box store, find great prices on that, check out Five Star because the cool thing about Oregon is there's no sales tax. So you're gonna save a ton of money by getting the great guitars and supporting a local organization. So go to www.fivestarguitars.com, check out what you need, let Joff Metz know that I sent you. It's the greatest store in uh, the Northwest and uh, and you'll, they'll hook you up. All right, business is done. Check this out. Monday night, we did a little different time schedule because uh, this gentleman had to get his taxes done today. So unlike a lot of the other musicians out there, this guy's actually contributing his part. He's paying his dues to Uncle Sam and uh, he's saving money on razor blades and haircuts. And so he's, uh, he's, he's spending all that money on tea and, uh, and nose rings. This dude is as rock star as you can possibly get. Sometimes you see these guys on MTV on, on stages and you see these guys that act like rock stars and you can see right through it, man. But this dude exudes rock and roll without even trying. He's the man, the myth, the legend, Kelly Lemieux, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here, my brother. Thanks for having me, buddy. How are you? I, I'm great, man. You got a Spectre Bass Cup. You got to you gotta promote this. Yeah, man, there. I got to like, I should like grab all the mugs and yeah. just. Uh, are they all mug I mugs? was going to, well, I have this really cool chimpanzee one. And the, and the arm is the handle. This oh, is really yeah. not that comfortable holding a chimp arm to no. drink your tea. And if you're not sponsored by chimps, then it doesn't, uh, doesn't make it. That's any true, man. You know? um, oh, although you I've know? been known to fling my feces at people when angry. Uh, that, that was pre buck cherry, right? Oh no, I still do it. Do you? Yeah. yeah people... I'm one of those. I'm like the Snickers commercial. I'm totally Joe Pesci. I do, if I don't eat, <laughs> Oh. I am psychoglycemic to the oomph degree. Oh my god! That... No, I'm serious. I'm. You can ask anybody that knows me. Yeah. People, people, if they know I'm coming, they'll stash food for me. That's good, man. They're that's... like, they're you... like, because and I hate going to the grocery store too. But you know, what do you? Especially do? now. Do you have a special mask that you bring to the stores now? Um, I have a bunch of different masks. I actually have some that I, I um, I bought in Japan when I was there in September because you know they got it right. Right. If you're not feeling well. Uh, there's no shame in um, when you're sick, not yeah. good, getting other people sick. There's no shame in that. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's no shame in being courteous. <laughs> well, it, None it, whatsoever. I, I, we talked about this before. We're not going to go into political stuff. We're not going to go into the downside of the pandemic. But what we can do is you can make fun of fucking ignorant people, right? So if they're, if in um, these, if eating decency. Always. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, God. Um, all right, I'm not gonna talk about masks for a second. I wanna talk as far away from typical interview type conversations that you have. This is uh, this is just gonna be fun, this is gonna be real. We're catching up because you and I haven't seen each other in a while. Uh, in no, person. it was uh, LA Guns. Oh my God, that's right. Which was really fun, right? It was I, great and they really, they beefed up the bossa nova there, man. The, yeah. the, the lighting and the sound there is like, I was, I was pretty impressed. Anyways, go on. Yeah, no, that's good. And actually, I, I forgot that we saw you there. The band has gone through so many different lineup changes, and I bet you, like me, have had several friends in different iterations of that band. So I've been that guy. Did you play that gig? No, but I've been oh, in like, yeah. no, you want to know something funny? My first national tour I ever did with my old band, The Electric Love Hogs, with yeah. John and Dave and Bobby and Donnie and, and uh, Karen and Cubby and Mickey. And um, that's a lot of bands. We supported the LA Gun Lagoons. Okay. We supported those guys. So my first national tour ever was um, the insanity and the craziest time I had or the craziest shit that happened was in Portland the second night of the, of the tour. Were you living here then? No, nope. okay, I was living in LA. LA. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I moved, I moved from Salem to Los Angeles very early 88. I wasn't even uh. 21. Yeah. I didn't even go to the ranch or any of these places everybody got herpes at. I never <laughs> went to any of those places. <laughs> you know, I, I guess it doesn't matter. The, the, the place everybody gave each other herpes at? You can admit to being from Salem. That's good, man. Some people are really embarrassed about that. But uh, I was born in Salem. But you got out right after high school. 
Well, so here's what happened. So I was born yeah. in Salem. My parents met there. My father was from Minnesota. Um, and then we moved back to Minnesota, hence my Minnesota Vikings Allegiance skull. <laughs> and um, Kirk Cousins for the win. Anyways, um, that just sounds weird. And um, um, we moved, so we moved back. So I spent pretty much all of the 70s as like a prepubescent. Um, and then we moved back to Salem in 79. Okay. And then in 88, I moved to Los Angeles, uh, pretty much out of high school. So I moved one time and then I went, I got to have a fucking car to live there. So I moved back, got a job at the Enchanted Forest. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I worked at the Enchanted oh. Forest, baby. Well, yeah. Didn't you hear the adage that nobody walks in L.A.? You didn't know that before you went? Um, I, I walked in L.A. even as late as like when I was living there because, um, excuse my hair. I actually washed my hair. And that and, messes like, it up. Did something with it. And yeah. I'm like, I'm, I've had it. The whole time it's in, it's been in like a uh, I've had it in a man bundemic <laughs> or, or or whatever I've had it I've had my hair up like I have no need to like wear it down and I put it down I was like oh oh wow it's like I'm actually seeing myself on here going dude my hair is getting long what oh the okay here's the deal for people that don't know this and we can get into this a little bit more. Kelly had a phase where there was no hair on his head, man. This dude, there was no hair on my body. He he beat cancer not that long ago. So I that would think at, at this four point, years ago. At this point, man, grow the hair long and don't get rid of it unless you know it falls out of your head for being hey, old. That's that's that's. I'm just like you know what? Yeah. I'm this old and I can still grow it. I may as well do it. Yeah, man. Actually, you have a huge full head of hair. Right, did you graduate '88? I graduated in '85. Oh, okay. You know, you mentioned right out of high school. So I was curious. Well, you know, 88 yeah. to me is right out of high school. Yeah. There was, yeah. there was, there was, well, I moved, actually, I moved there in late 86, early 87. Okay. But I moved to Orange County with some bros of mine from Salem. My buddy Lee Meyer and uh, Les Riggs. And then uh, my buddy Jeff Fuller, who I played with in Salem. Jeff's still down there. Jeff just won a, uh, what, do you, what is it for TV? Uh, an, Emmy? an Emmy? He just won yeah. an Emmy. For, he did the sound for that Dave Grohl recording studio thing he did oh, yeah. so he mixed that so he got a little he got a little emmy he hangs his keys on but he's he actually conned me into he's like move down here i got a place for you to live oh, i live with my friend laura bennett too okay um i don't know if she's on here laura you should listen i, I posted yep yeah you did kind of like i kind of like hide from from facebook but anyways yeah so it, i moved it? in early 88 i moved there march God. of 88 right before i turned 21 so this is yeah. glorious. I may have But found, I graduated in 85. So there you go. Do the math, people. I, I found somebody that's almost as ADD as I am, which is fantastic. This is going to be a fun. Well, I haven't eaten either. So I'm going into psychoglycemic mode. Oh, God. Well, you just got yourself some tea, man. Get yourself some biscuits and have a little tea. You know, you need to go to the grocery store. Uh, yeah, man. I you have know, stuff, but I got I to gotta make it downstairs. And um, Don't go this time. I got some kick-ass coconut cream pie, though, my friend. Shut up. Dude, I'm coming over now. We'll just do this. Well, she person. made it for my roommate. But, oh man. Well, yes. it was it was via me because I because I always get like the good stuff. And so she hooked him up. It was very nice of her. Very sweet. When, coconut when, cream pie. Which is funny because I love coconut cream pie. So dude, me it's too. For coconut. Me too. When when the pandemic is done, when they have a vaccine, we're just gonna do this. October. Kind of I'm predicting October. All right. Well, that's my birthday, dude. I turned 50 in you, October. And oh, uh, nice. yeah, so I'll come over. We'll share some coconut cream pie together. We'll do this thing in person. Yeah. But until then, we're gonna we're gonna um, let's talk a little bit about that move, man. So you talked about these people from Salem moving out to to uh, yeah. LA. Did you have a band with these guys? Did you go down there expecting to be playing in a band and rocking? No, and I I went down there thinking that I was gonna get my ass handed to me by every like like on every corner because MI was there. now funny enough I went to MI and okay. I visited a friend of mine, my friend Jeff, and I went there and I was like cool. And I hung out where all the people were staying. Actually, my, my Portland buddy, now my buddy Paul Gilbert, name drop. Yeah, but um, Paul was actually living in that building too at that time. But he was um, teaching I didn't him. meet him then though. But um, my buddy Jeff was living in that building and I was listening to everybody and I met a bunch of people and I was like going, mm, I feel like, not to sound like an arrogant twat, but I was like, I think I'm better than I, I don't need to be. I think I'm good enough that I don't need to go here. Right. The school. Because I was like, do I want to spend that money? And because my philosophy was like, just do it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hustle. You know, I, it's like I, I, I didn't want to go to school to learn how to play in key. I wanted to play out of key my way. Right. Yeah. Well, um, 
you know, the interesting thing is if you look at the East versus West coast, right? So I was talking to like Nate Morton, who was a Berkeley grad, but he's living in LA. He's playing on the voice. That's his gig taught. I, well, and Glenn Sobel, right? Glenn taught at LA music oh. Academy for a while. I know Glenn. Glenn's great. Amazing. Glenn's right? one of those school. See, now I think it's okay for drummers to be schooled and learn it. Well, but some he, bass players, we need to, dude, you know, the joke, right? About the, 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 uh, kid who, uh, his dad for for his uh, 13th birthday bought him a bass and got him bass lessons and the kid I'll I'll do the quick version. The kid leaves, he goes to his first bass lesson and he comes back and his dad's all, "Hey son, what'd you learn in your first bass lesson?" And the kid goes, "Oh my god, dad, it was so great. I learned the first five notes on the E string. That's awesome, son." Second week, kid comes back from a second bass lesson. Dad goes, "Hey son, what'd you learn at your second bass lesson?" The kid goes, "Oh, Ted, it's amazing. I learned the first five notes on the A string. That's great, son. Third week comes along, kid comes back. Dad goes, hey, son, what'd you learn in your third ba bass lesson? And the kid goes, I blew it off, man. I had a gig. Oh, yeah. That's all you need, buddy. That's it. Amy, baby. Yeah, that's it. Fifth I'm, breath. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. No, I am. Um, well, unless you're going to be Billy Sheehan, right? Yeah. You're, you know, I think. I know Billy didn't even go to school. That's well, you know, he's self-taught. He has Scientology to help him out, man. So that's all good, you know. He's got Xenu to uh <laughs> that's right. He's got Xenu. As long as he times that for that 10, 15 percent, whatever they're taking, he's good, man. He'll that's, be taken care of. He'll get a good seat on the UFO. That's the truth. He probably already has that locked up, but you know, unless you have some class at, at MI to teach you how to hustle, that's the thing, man. The networking thing. So you went down there. And you had some friends that came from from Salem, but you've yeah. got you've got a natural way about you. I've just you know haven't gotten to know you a little bit, man. <laughs> but you know you just Stop. walk in. No, but like that's the thing, right? I mean, if you can communicate and you're an easy hang, that's where and you're going to get the gig. You're absolutely right, because you know what? It doesn't. You and I both know it don't matter how fucking good you are. Yeah. If you're a pain in the ass and no fun to hang with. Yeah. You don't get the fucking gig, bro. Yeah. Sorry. Jaco Pistorius, one of the greatest bass players on the planet, could not get a fucking gig to save his ass. You watch, there's a Jerry Jamont interview with you with him in like 86. I think he died in 88 or something like yeah. that, 89. Yeah. yeah. Jerry Jamont's, and he's doing his instructional thing. And he's like, yeah. and Jerry Jamont's like, whoa. And he goes, and they're talking. He goes, yeah, man, get me a fucking gig. Right. The guy's doing an instructional video and he couldn't even get a fucking gig yeah. because he was a crazy motherfucker. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth, man. He was. And, you know, you may get the gig, but you're not going to keep the gig. No, right? no. If, if and, then, not... and then and then, after the third time. Yeah. People. There it is. Look at that, Buck Cherry, baby. I love people that. People stop calling you. You yeah. don't get the phone calls. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you brought up the ring because that gig is appropriate for the conversation we're having. Uh, I got to know Jimmy a little bit, you know, previously. Your previous Jimmy Asher, I, I honestly, have, have, I've been around him. Yeah. Um, back in the day, he was in a band called The Broken Homes with Craig Ross from, oh. who were we talking about earlier? Right. Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. And, and, and actually, Craig used to date the first job I ever worked at, my buddy Jeff got me, his girlfriend. I met him. He he. His first girlfriend was used to work there. Oh Funny really? Enough. Yeah yeah. This was like I'm talking. You know, 88, 89. Early days. Uh, yeah, he was in the but but Jimmy. Um, I never really hung out with Jimmy, but um, I have a feeling I would be really good friends with him. You would be, unless you were in a band with him. I think. You know what? Well, I'm, there's a lot of people like that. Yeah, totally, know? man. I mean, I'm, I'm probably not the greatest guy to be in a band with either. I know with Jimmy, I I really dug hanging out with them. The shows that we did back in, um, with Buck Cherry like 10, 12 years ago. Who are you? Who I was playing. You? With, I was playing with Cleveland actually locally. With oh Kevin yeah, Han, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with Hansi. Yeah, and we uh, so we did shows there, and I actually shot Kiss stuff up here with Dan Pred, and we were doing like EPKs with Kiss when they came through. Uh, Jimmy was down at that gig, and he just, I mean, and this is not the dog on it, man, but he was so openly. Uh, dissatisfied with the gig that he, he had been forever. Yeah, and, it, you know, it, it, I had I had um because you know I I came up with Stevie. I've known Stevie like he was. I met him when I first moved to L.A. Within the first couple of years, I think. So I think I met Stevie at least by like ninety. 
I, I, re, I have vivid remember memories of hanging out with him in like 92, 93, but yeah. we probably met before that because, you know, shit gets a little foggy when you're just turned 21 and right. you're in Los Angeles and, eh. yeah. um, but anyways, um, um, yeah, yeah. It was openly known. I mean, I, nobody was surprised. Yeah, and this is not to dog on it at all, but I think anytime you see a guy, because at that point too, man, the band's at the height of their freaking popularity, you know, crazy bitches blowing up. And if you can't feel some kind of gratitude about yeah. that, you know, yep. that gig, no matter where you're at, you know, you see people like that. And I hadn't heard from Jimmy since, and it's a drag, you know, I mean, you would hope that he'd find some satisfaction somewhere that he could be happy, but some people just- Well, don't. he ended up getting, so ironically, he ended up getting the cult gig after us. And I was like, oh shit. Wow. I want that gig. No, just kidding. Yeah. No, I'm stoked with Buck Cherry. We work, man, and I like the songs. It's all good. Yeah. I am not complaining. But he got that cult gig. He went out with him for one tour and then never got asked back. Yeah, man. Well, take notes, kids. You know, honestly, if you uh, if you got Have a, look, a little bit of gratitude goes a long fucking way. Do you know that? Oh, I know my that. God. Uh, you know. Every kid that's out there that's wanting to get a gig right now, your chops are probably good enough to get 90% of the gigs you're looking at. Just work on the hang, man. You know, just be easy to get along with. If you're going to be on the bus with somebody 24 hours a day, sharing rooms with each other, just have a little decency, a little just common courtesy, you know, pick up after yourself. Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, pick, pick up it. after yourself. It's like having, I mean, shit, we got 10 dudes on a bus sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with crew and, and, and merch and, and, you know, the band guys and la, 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 la. And it's like, man, you got to like, you know, shut your light off in the bunk. <laughs> right. Don't leave it on when people are trying to, you know, just headphones, really like, dude. pick Where up fucking, after yourself. Wear headphones. Don't keep your stuff on speakerphone, man. That drives me nuts when you're, you know, somebody else thinks that their conversation has to be heard by everybody. Dude, it drives me. Uh, that little pet peeve. Sorry. So, um, that's why I just, I just buy an air horn and just walk around going, ah! <laughs> yeah. you know, man, I, one thing that uh, a few Not really. like, uh, people that I've talked to on the show, the people that go on sort of unsung are the crew guys, man. It's so great to have a great bunch of crew dudes that oh, man. Have drivers it's, it's, and techs. It's, it's a matter of, uh, it's a matter of like having a good show and like smashing your guitar. Like Lenny, Lenny Kravitz heard her. Right. Well, um, it's it's frustrating if you have a bad crew. I uh, I can honestly tell you I've I've had uh, we're we're blessed right now. I mean we we like shit. We did like 154 shows last year or something silly like that. Wow. We did yeah. I did 155 because I had the DCs open yeah. for Buck Cherry. That's right, <laughs> I to, man. I got to sit in double digit weather for two sets. God. But it was awesome. I had a blast. But yeah. yeah. So so we're lucky. We have a kick ass crew. That's the man. I guess I don't want to detract or did like uh, get distracted from the crew conversation, but people that are watching this that don't know, aside from the Buck Cherry gig, yeah, you've got a, for, a Portland band, the DCs, which is an incredible tribute to Bon Scott era ACDC. And, uh, and the oh, lineup, fun. dude, the lineup, like every guy in that band is, I, mean, I have a, such a man crush on every person in that band. Steve McSwain, man, uh, you know, I was blessed to get to rock with him for a benefit a couple months ago. And then I talked to him on the show. He's one of my favorite humans on the planet, man. Oh, yeah, he's super nice. Oh, my God. You've man. had him on, right? Yeah, I had him on the show. Yeah, we yeah, talked yeah. about McSwain guitar. And... He lives like 10 blocks from me, too. Yeah. That was man. a whole funny meeting, too, because I would was, I was always posting uh, a certain thing for my location, although I stopped posting it. And he goes, hey, man, I always see you posting that. And I go, yeah. He goes, do you live in Portland? I go, yeah, I do. And then we found out we live like right by each other. He and then I saw his um, his his YouTube clips of doing some AC, a couple ACDC songs. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're doing a band, bro. I don't care if you can sing other stuff. We're doing a Bon Scott band, and you're singing in it. Totally. And then I just happened to um, speaking of crew guys, my uh, one of our techs, Dave Pay, who's worked with everybody. Uh, Dave's like, hey man, you got to meet this cat, Doug Rappaport. He just oh. moved. He just moved to Oregon. He goes, I don't know where he's at, but I think he's close to Portland or in Portland. And I'm like, dude. And I literally had just gotten out of the hospital. I was From your treatment. bald. I had, uh, I had a hat transplant. I was just wearing my <laughs> white fedora all the time. And um, and he gave me his number and I called him up and he plays with Edgar Winter Group. And I was right. just like, dude, 
let's get together and jam. And then, uh, you know, Ryan Moore, you're, you're, you guys are like rotating drummers. Love it, I knew man. as soon as I put that band together, people were going to start poaching my guys. But oh, yeah. Well, that's, Ryan, but you know what? That's Ryan and cool I have because, traded gigs for years, bro. No, no, no. Good. I know. I know. But it was just like, I was just cracking up. I was like, oh, I know this is going to yeah. happen. But you know what? That's, that's my bad for being too busy because yeah. I you couldn't know. keep them working like I wanted to. It's not like I kept telling them. I kept telling somebody, I'm all, dude, get somebody to take my spot when I'm gone and you guys keep playing, but nobody's got ads. Uh, yeah. You, you know what? The the cool thing about that gig is that it probably stays fresh, you know, so you do it just. It does. Enough. Well, and that's the thing is it's like, yeah. man, you can beat that dead horse. Yeah. That's it's true. like, I love old ACDC. Uh -huh. I love new ACDC. But oh, no. It, Hang on. But, I'm going low, low, low no. power mode. Hold on. No Oops. problem, man. I and Doug's actually the only it. guy in that band I don't know, to be honest with you. I mean, I've seen you guys, and uh, and I've known about Doug. I know he's got crazy shredder chops as well, but he's he does. Well. And uh, uh, you know, so McSwain is uh, it's really crazy, man, because I didn't see him play guitar before, but the guitars he builds are so right. badass too, man. I, yeah, they're dope. If if, uh, if you're a guitarist out there and you didn't see the episode, go check out mcswainguitars.com and you'll see. Yeah, he incredible. makes all that kooky ass shit. God, dude, the one for the the bees, that flying V with the dragon. That have you oh, seen? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's the most insane guitar I've ever seen. And he hand carved everything. Uh, I thought Kelly was passing out here. This is no, good. no. I, I, I'm, I'm on, and now I'm plugged in, and I'm, I'm trying not to do that. Like I'm a giant. <laughs> and then you're actually from that angle, you look like Jack Black, which is great too. So, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that is awesome. Um, so tell me, man. So L.A. I know that like Goldfinger was like the big band that you sort of got known for early on, right? uh yeah i guess so you I mean, can but, say that but like, so tell me about your so. la times and and what happened with you so that uh we can get caught up and and well, I, well john john was in the um the electric love hogs with 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 uh with me and okay. it was john feldman who's producer extraordinaire now and um <coughs> excuse me corona and no, um don't joke don't joke what yeah, but I have leukemia. I can make all the jokes I, I want. Oh my, Cancer yeah. jokes all day. Would you trade leukemia for Corona? Fuck no. No, yeah. no, I already did the leukemia. I did my time. God, man, that's crazy. Um, although right. I have a feeling like I would probably be the guy that gets it and doesn't know he has it and just gives it to everyone. It's right. like, la, 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 hey, what's up? Oh. Spitting on everyone with no mask on. just Licking their face. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I love you. What's oh. your name? Oh, I'm sorry I killed your grandmother. Oh, my God. Oh god. Okay, so back to uh the electric love hogs. Oh no. Um, <laughs> wah, wah. Oh my god. Um so um <laughs> oh John and should I just name drop everybody? So Dave Kushner went on to do Velvet Revolver and amongst other shit. Sure. I can't read just he I'm sure he's got a Wikipedia page. Go so look it up. Um and then Bobby uh Bobby ended up he was in that band Orgy for a while. Okay. He was the original guy for that. And Donnie, Donnie went and did UPS, but Donnie's a ripping guitar player. Yeah. Um, but he's got he's got some stuff going on. He's the only um, guy that has it like a retirement plan right now, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, and 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 and, and uh, somebody thinks they're funny sending me texts. Uh oh. Yeah. Anyways, um, take that, Jimmy Asher. I should have. <laughs> uh, we we love Jimmy. We want the best. I know, dude. I'm um, sorry. Um, um, where what was I talking about before? Like you're, you're from, talking about the, the members of Electric Love Hog. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. so um John left and started doing um but, but I started doing Goldfinger after a while. And then um I ended up meeting back up with them. Um I was in another band called the 22 Jacks with you know, I can name drop everybody. Uh fuck. Actually Jose, Jose Modellis, who lives in town here from Revival Drops. I yeah. kind of uh I feel like um I, they wanted this like Austrian punk rock drummer guy, and I was like, "Fuck no, we're getting Jose." Nice. I basically auditioned all the drummers because everybody was super busy. Our drummer broke his hand, and we were doing the Warp tour. Okay. And um, we ended up, anyways. Jose auditioned. He was just killer and had chops and memory, and like it's really important when the drummer can remember the songs. You know, you know, right? I, I don't even remember. Sorry. Anyway, uh, that's your one. That's the one gig. Is you you. You make the school of fish turn left and right. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? So Long so anyways, um, Jose was great. He had a great memory. It was just fun hang. And and uh Chris Shiplet was in it, who later was in No Use for Name, 
during that, and then he went on to be in what's the name of that band? Foo Fighters. Oh yeah, that's a good gig. I think he's in that band still. Um, and then um, who else, man? There was guys. I mean, it was kind of a revolving door at one point, like a lot of bands. But um, anyways, um, I we went out and supported Goldfinger, and uh, Goldfinger needed somebody to fill in for their bass player, and then he they weren't getting along with him because he. I just don't think he wanted to tour. So a lot of people, when they're not happy, they tend to act out instead of just going, you know what, this probably isn't for me. Sure. Like some people have a problem quitting. It's like it's like people that like guilty. are over the relationship. Dude, I'm guilty. Sorry, that's me. Right. Yeah. Or, or just like, you know, you're over the relationship. You don't have the balls to break up with the person. Yeah. So you just act like an ass Again. until they finally break up with you. Guilty. So, okay. so there's Sorry. a lot of that that goes on. Yeah. And... But but they knew that you were the guy that's like waiting in the wings. Well, that can, I, can hang. I filled in for him and then they were having issues with him and he called me and, you know, uh, next thing, you know, 15 years later, I got the Buck Cherry gig. I, I never but, quit. I never quit Goldfinger because John got really? busy producing. I'm still, I filled in from uh, Mike Herrera is doing it now from okay. MXPX. Yeah. He's been doing it. But the thing with Goldfinger is, is John's so busy recording and he makes way more money doing that it's like they do like like 15 shows a year or something okay, yeah and i would still do it if you had the I, would time. Love to do it. I love playing with those guys I, I i mean i it's not like i quit right yeah so no, you're still on the wikipedia page i'm sure right so yeah. i well two years ago i filled in and did a show mike couldn't do a show i flew right. out and did it yeah so at the eagles ballroom there in milwaukee right by like the whole Jeffrey Dahmer feeding ground. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's the Dahmer buffet. I, I, I think they renamed that, but um, <laughs> sorry, man. I, maybe I'm punchy right now, but I, all I have to do is just look at your face right now. <laughs> You're cracking me I up. I know this is bad lighting. I wish I had better lighting. No, I, uh, my, my, my dark ass freaking room. No, that's to, it. You have to counter your personality with the dark room. This is good. I, you know, right. I, was, I was thinking about these are the gigs because I didn't know at what point you joined Goldfinger. Um, you know, I heard about you doing the gig because I started playing some stuff with Mike Skill in town. And oh, he yeah. Said, God, he I said, know Mike. We know we need a bass player, man. He said, uh, this guy, Kelly Lemieux, we got to be playing with him. And I had heard your name and he was going to try and get a hold of you, but you were heading back down to LA for some gigs. It was pre Buck Cherry. I ran into Mike down in Salem at really? Normandy's okay. Guitars, Jim Normandy, yeah. who I worked at for a little, a little time there. Okay. Down in Salem. And um, I ran into him there. Mike's very lovely. I, I just saw Great him again deal. right right before the pandemic hit. He was down on Hawthorne and I'm all Mike Skills. Yeah. Yeah. I just did a video with him yesterday, man. We uh, oh, no shit. we tracked a song that, that during that time when we were gonna try and have you come down and play some bass like eight years ago, seven, eight I, years I, ago. I, listen, I'm yeah. still around town. Uh, okay. if anybody's out there. I Still. like playing bass. I mean, I like making money too, but I like playing bass. So. Oh, dude, it was the first Doing, time I, you know. it was the first time I even touched sticks since February. It was so freaking cathartic, man. It felt so good. We shot the song, we did the recording like seven, eight years ago, and then he just released it about two weeks oh, wow. ago. And uh, Chuck Alcazi in Detroit did the record and he said, hey man, we need a video for this. So Mike said, come out to my studio in Happy Valley. And I just went down and did a little music video with my mask on. And then and they set up cameras and they left the room and I took my mask off. And But uh, he wants to do some live performance where we can all be in separate sections and just do some live stream because he's got some interviews coming up and he wants to pimp these thing out. So it's Mike Skill. If you're listening, call Kelly and we'll we'll do this thing. Let's just trio it up. What do you Hit say? me up, Mike. I yeah, like man. to rock. I like to rock. Uh, it'd be fun I as like hell to, to play rock. with you. We I haven't rocked together. We haven't played together. No, we have it's, not. It would be great, man. I, you know, I, I don't want, uh, you know. Ryan I want to put it. I'll, I've been talking to uh, Kevin Hansi about doing a. Uh, I, I might just do a two piece. We, we were because you know we did the decimation front with Jerry and all that stuff. The uh, from Poison Idea. I don't know if you caught any of that. No, stuff. I didn't. What I put about? it up on Facebook. It's on Bandcamp. It's okay. uh, uh, for anybody that gives a, a Harry Rats patoot. Uh, it's called Decimation Front. It's on Bandcamp, and it's me, Jerry A from Poison Idea. Uh, your, your bro and my bro, Ryan Moore, and yeah, your buddy. bro and my bro, um, Kevin Hahn, okay. or as I call him, as I refer to him as Hansi. Hansi. Hey, sit on <laughs> oh and, um, and, um, and Jerry crushed it. Everybody crushed it. And we did three songs. Okay. And if you like heavy, if you like Motorhead, 
You like Poison Idea? You like Slayer? You like mm. Suicidal Tendencies? Hardcore. You like like you like like you like like uh, punk metal? Yeah. You'll fucking dig it. It's right fucking heavy like a fucking Chevy, bro. It's on Bandcamp. And then it's on what's Bandcamp. It? And you know we haven't really super pursued it. I wanted to do more songs and 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 I just you know we did it and this pandemic hit and you know pandemic rules bend over grab your ankles and see the, what you can get away with the rona man okay so but yes we, decimation we, front it's i'm kind of picky okay and um i fucking think it came out really fucking good yeah well you wouldn't be pumping um, it if you didn't believe in it you know no so. and 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 everybody crushed it man and kevin kevin i actually even played i played half of the guitars on it too did you i played all the rhythm sh- well i mean yeah me and kevin we uh hansi we 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 tracked it really um unconventionally but it doesn't feel that way we did it to a click because you know we had ryan come in and 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 so kevin and i did did it on guitar to a click all the rhythm shit and then and then um we had ryan and then i i came in and put bass and then ryan came over and did the drums and then we handed it we handed the jerk here's the cool thing and it just worked out that way I titled I titled the songs they were instrumental and I titled them thinking that Jerry would write whatever lyrics to it. Yeah. And he took the fucking song titles and wrote the lyrics to the song titles. Oh, after that. And he kept my song titles as a, hey, is that do I get publishing on the no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um no, but dude, and he like, but you know, in in also in my defense, I used cool names for the songs. I was hoping but, so. Uh, but yeah, he did that, and it was like, it was it was it was a little magical. I was really impressed, man. That guy's a fucking consummate fucking pro, man. Well, he had lyrics that were oh. deep and fucking cool, and and like he kicked ass, man, and he fucking knocked it out. And De- decimation front, I'm decimation I'm psyched. front. And then Ryan came in and crushed it, and like I, Kevin and I mixed it, and then Kevin did all his crazy mad scientists super he sauce is. that he puts on it and he's you know badass. yeah dude him. totally so so back to you and i not playing yeah um yeah we i keep telling him i'm like we got to do a new wave band bro i want to do synthesizers i want to do guitars <laughs> and synthesizers and like electronic drums you play oh. you got you got an electronic drum kit no you don't have a I just I got I was gonna move my Roland stuff over here, but no. Yeah, you, you got know, a Roland V drum? No, uh, I've got my SPDSX here, and I've got an SPD over here, and a lot of triggers. What's, that? What's uh, an SPD? They're uh, just all the multi pads, you know. Oh, um, okay. And I've got triggers for everything. I want to go like I want to go like uh, um. I want I want to go like uh, middle aged missing persons. Yeah. Oh my God, man. I'm certainly the uh, the middle. I got a I got a band name and everything, but I'm not telling anyone. Yeah. Save it, man. Somebody's gonna steal oh, it. Fuck. You know, I I was nicknamed Kevy Metal for the longest time, but since I've been in the Flock of Seagulls gig, everybody's saying, "Yeah, you're not. You lose your metal cred." So I think you know, I, I gotta. I you know what? I don't think you. Well, I guess you could lose your metal cred, but it doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't I, think I, so. I, if I you can it. still play it, you I'm, still metal. The, the double bass is mostly gone now. I really, man. I, well, who I, really I, plays double bass anymore? Unless you're in Slayer or right. some fucking super like power metal bro no dude ryan moore's got the double bass chops man on the kraken he's got that wicked new tama kit you know well they're well well that's you know that's you know what are they tuned down to z minor or whatever <laughs> z, yeah hippie death cult, if you're man, tuned that, down and like you know i mean i fucking love motorhead yeah oh, you know dude. overkill dude okay like let me talk about the motorhead connection really quick i just thought of this francis ruiz who's yeah. a wicked badass drummer and i sweetest, love the sweetest guy. this St. Francis. Yep. He is a wicked, wicked, awesome dude. Back yep. in his Scorpions days. Yes. He uh, he did some life, or I, I, I guess band saving skills with that band. And I won't say much about his former employer, but I will say that Scorpions was my first favorite band on the planet. I went to Germany to find them. I was such a hardcore fan in high school. What year was this? 88. Yeah, I just, the, the, like right after probably three so weeks. So you're three I'm, years younger than me yeah so did you see were you at the uh uh blackout number of the beast girl school show no the year after though the 11th oh, Sting. i hit and, that one. Oh yeah i was there but, yeah but i yeah, uh, what's up? i grew up in montana though see so that's even worse than salem oh my but, uh, god 
but I had to go as far as Red Rocks. I had to go see him in Red Rocks, you know, and, and, but I was going to say Mickey D I think single-handedly came back to save the Scorpions. Thank God. I love him in that band. And he was such an underrated. Which is funny because Francis worked for him. I know. And he worked for the Scorpions too. Yeah. That's why I brought up the connection because I love the fact that Francis is doing the gig with you and Butt Cherry. Dude, he's such a great drummer too, but wicked, you know, like he's taking, he's slumming it. He came, he came, He's, he's slumming it to play with us right now. Yeah, like, God well, bless him. I'm glad he did. I am so glad to see him in that band too. And I love Xavier, you know, wicked drummer, man. Oh, but, dude, uh, I love I, X too, man. And, and he's doing great things too. So it's cool that yep. everybody's happy, you know? Yeah. But uh, but I think Francis would agree with me that uh, Mickey D is the uh, the saving grace for Scorpions. Thank you for bringing them back around for me. And uh, Kevin Hahn will 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 tell you about uh, my my stories with that. I think he'll be. Oh, I think in. um, I think Kevin's got some too. Yeah, they're all about the same same era. Same, yeah, same stuff. Yeah. But um, and but I was thinking about the double bass thing too, dude. There's tons of double bass in the Paul Gilbert stuff you're doing. So tell me about that gig. Oh yeah, well you know I play. I got to, I was lucky enough to to to. I don't know. I guess I fooled Paul and he thought it was good. <laughs> He's just or maybe he was just slumming it. Or maybe he, maybe he's just, uh, no offense to anyone. Maybe he just wanted somebody to play bass. Oh yeah, that could be. Um, you know, yeah. I like, cause I, I really do enjoy holding down the fort. I yeah. mean, I can let a flurry out every now and again if I need to, but honestly, I mean, yeah, I got to play with some pretty wicked drummers doing that. Oh yeah. Man. Um, let's I see. Well, the first tour I did with him was in 98. Really? Yeah. And that was Scott Coogan played okay. drums on that. Wicked. Who's yeah. with uh, LA Guns. <laughs> See how he 360 oh from That's earlier? funny. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. He's the drummer in the, the film. He is. He was yeah. doing Ace Freely before that. And right. Now Matt Starr is on that gig. And yeah, everybody trades. Right. Games. Yeah. Right. And so anyways, um, uh, yeah, I got to play with first. So I, so I did that. And then. Uh, Paul hit me back in 2012 and I did um, uh, Deke's Guitar Geek Festival at the NAMM show. Okay. Uh, me, it was me and Paul and his wife Emmy on keyboards and this drummer named Rodney Holmes, who you should oh, probably know who he is. Uh, of course, man. I got to play with Rodney he a few the, times, a bunch I, of times. I didn't realize and he was doing the Paul Gilbert gig, man. That's he, cool. he did it originally and then when Paul went to put See, Rodney lives in New York, right? And and, and it's just super guy. and easier to have a. Paul was living in um, in L.A. at the time, and so was I. So he's like, Kelly, I'm putting another record together, and I was actually no, Kelly, I'm doing a summer guitar camp called the Great Guitar Escape. Do you want to be the uh, bass player for that? Now, little did I know. I had to learn three nine-minute Guthrie fucking Govin oh, songs with wow. no fucking rehearsals. Chops. Excuse my fucking French. <laughs> Chops, um, man. The Aristocrat, um, Aristocrat I had to do stuff. That. It was. It was. Oh, who else did that, man? So I did two years, and Rodney did that, and then um, he asked. We did that Deeks, Deeks guitar geek after that, I think, and then. Paul wanted to do do another record. We did the vibrato record, and he had this other cat who you may have heard of. His name's Thomas Lang. Oh yeah, yeah, I knew he was doing that one. And yeah. so I got to play with Thomas. I spent a lot of time with Thomas Lang, Insane. who I, I I love. Also love. I love Rodney. Rodney's phenomenal. But I they're mean, two completely different drummers, man. For sure. Yeah, but still both equally amazing. Badass. Yeah, and, just and and um and um and physically completely different too right, yep. rodney's like a very like small cherubic like yeah. he's just a little like you can't tell how old he is you're like i had to ask him i'm all right motherfucker how old are you <laughs> just I like that i won't well because i was just like you're either like 20 or you're 100 right yeah it's like he's just like this ageless sort of he's on the upper end of that <laughs> he's closer to my age than he yeah. is to you know yeah and and so um but I mean, if you look how long he's been around, you yeah. figure so it out records, after a while. Man. But yeah, smoke dude, the Brecker yeah. brothers. Yeah. Oh he played my on God. The, uh, the Santana, the yeah. big fucking do 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 with the Rob yeah. Thomas. He played on that and toured with them. He's played with I'm I'm sure I'm forgetting. You know, yeah. He's on Wikipedia, people. Right. Go find him. I'm sure if he's not, he should be. I was listening I mean, to the fuck, podcast if I'm again. on Wikipedia, he better be. That's right, man. 
So, well, Jeff Bowders did the gig with you too, right? I didn't do Bowdies, oh. man. I, I, but I did later on in the last couple of years, Paul asked me to do a thing. Uh, the the Demarzio people were in town, Larry and his yeah. family, um, and 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 because uh, he's just a family-run business. Yeah. And Larry came out, and and Bowdy happened to be in town, as we call him. Yeah. Jeff Bowders, and so we ended up doing a thing for uh, Paul's PG thirteen pickups. So if you okay. go and look at the PG thirteen pickups, you'll see uh, Bowders and us playing some blues jams and fucking oh, E or whatever God. the fuck. We did a bunch of shit, but that's what they used. That's and we old... did it right here in Portland, just about a couple miles away at the hallowed halls or wherever the fuck yeah. it was. How is that room, man? Do you like that studio? It's just a big, huge room. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've heard we recordings. Did, I mean, come Paul's from really, he was really into doing shit live. Yeah. We did some demos where he had this old school sound engineer come out with this. He had a cinder block and this one, one fucking mic. We sat up in a circle and we just played. Um, uh, I put my nose ring in after like I had it out for like six months. I just put it back in and it just popped out. It doesn't want to be here. So look at this. How, how, oh. nice, how nice you to dress up for the conversation, man. This is good. Hey, he's well, he's picking his my nose. nose. I didn't want to look like I was picking it. No, that's all right, man. There's no rule here. You're not wearing pants um, either, well, right? Well, there is in my world. I don't want to be the guy picking his nose on fucking video so everybody can post it later. Me going, uh, hey, what's up, me. motherfucker? Ah. You didn't wear pants, right? You're no I did. Oh, you did? Okay, because I was saying there are no pants for this gig. It's nah, not required. I wore pants, man. I didn't. But uh, Good for you. Bowder's another Salem guy, man. It's cool yeah. that you guys did work together again. So and, we finally did, but not with Paul. I didn't okay. get to. He did all that stuff with Paul when I was in uh, Goldfinger. And then, you know, like I said, Goldfinger got unbusy because John was producing. And then, um, yeah, I started playing with Paul and I went did some, like, we did a crazy tour for that in 2013. And then I was doing Goldfinger stuff too. And then I ended up getting the call for the Buck Cherry thing. How did that happen? Um, well, I've known Stevie for years, man. I've known Stevie for eons. And, and uh, you know, we're in the mutual admiration fan club. And, and he hit me up like 20 times before it actually even happened because Jimmy wasn't very happy. Yeah, right. And, um, you know, he's just like, I got the guy. Kelly's the guy. Kelly's the guy. So there was a couple times where he's like, hey, man. He would like kind of like kind of yeah. you know, vibe me out. So uh, check your temperature a little is bit. Your, is your passport? How's your passport? Is right. your passport up to date? So uh, what are you doing in November? Da, da. And I'm like, what's up? Learn and the that catalog. happened a couple of times. And, you know, I get it. They talked it out. And, but yeah. I know I know that story, man. Were you somebody's listening? unhappy, they it's usually just just pull the fucking bandaid off. You know, were you working on the catalog? Just kind of just in case, ready to go. Or are you, you one know of those what? guys that I had heard their stuff before and I'd been playing with Paul Gilbert. So no, I didn't. Okay. I was like, uh, I got this. Yeah. I should have. Well, so then the so then I get a phone call and it's like, can you learn 25 songs in two weeks? And I'm oh, like, yeah. Uh yeah, but I'm gonna be gone for three days because I have a fly out goldfinger gig. And then, you know, I actually live in Portland, Oregon. Oh, you do? Oh, well, we didn't know that. I'm all don't worry. So I flew back from Colorado after doing a goldfinger gig loaded my van up, drove down to LA, got two really fucking minuscule rehearsals with them. That's and then it? flew to South America and did festivals with Aerosmith, White Snake, oh first show in Argentina. Oh. I'm playing, go, yep, I'm doing it. Here I am. Yeah. And I look over and I go, oh, fuck, Joey Kramer's watching us from the other side of the oh, stage. Holy yes. shit, rap. Then That's we get done and I go, all right. And they're like, good job. Cool. You know, and, and I go, wow, man, I saw Joey Kramer watch this. And he goes, oh, Brad Whitford was like, if you'd have looked left, he was like 10 feet away from us. I was like, oh, oh I'm so glad I didn't look at you. Totally. That was like the time, the first show we did with Paul Gilbert in, 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 yeah, it was the first show. The first show, the warm up show was in LA at the House of Blues in two, the end of 2012. And we'd just done like a two hour set. It's like an evening with Paul Gilbert. Oh yeah. And I was like, dude, a two hour set. And I am like, I'm psychoglycemic, dude. If I don't eat, I get fucking loony tunes. So you got a burrito hanging off your base cab. I <laughs> ran off the stage with the last note, the bow, 
thank you. Good night. We yeah. were mega deaf and you were excellent. <laughs> and I fucking ran up the stairs, down the hall, went right, jumped down at the table and started shoveling the uh, fruit tray. We had oh, like, yeah. just started shoveling. And, and uh, my girlfriend at the time was there. And then uh, my Tommy Pearson okay. from the DCs yeah. and, and all his uh, Coyote Creek and the famous faces and, Hey, what? Uh, God, who else? Brady Goss. Uh, Brady, right. listen. And and anyways, Tommy was took. He took pictures of the whole show, and he came, sat down. Then Paul came in. Then Emmy came in, and then ten seconds later, I'm stuffing my face. Billy Sheehan comes walking uh, in, and yes, course. I'm telling this fucking story. Yeah. Because I didn't record it, but Tommy was there, and my ex girlfriend, who doesn't talk to me anymore, the only one, ironically from Salem. Uh, oh um God. i kid i kid the mentally handicapped oh um i don't really oh my God. i'm going to hell people and i know <laughs> it. i don't care i'm okay with it you have to make fun of everybody um, okay. yes you do yes you do so, so i'll i'll be telling some drummer jokes later but what did she and do man did she and come over and so she and walks in, my i know i got sidebarred because i didn't eat i'm yeah. getting a little psychoglycemic i love it um um he walks in scans the room looks right at me points at me and goes i shit you not i i would not but i was just like well, it kind of blew me away it still blows me he looks at me and he goes great fucking bass player you're wow. a great bass player wow. and i was just like I, I i was literally had food in my mouth and i go and i go oh fuck <laughs> I, i'm not kidding you all i'm like I'm so glad I didn't know you were here. Oh yeah. And he goes, "You're an awesome bass player, dude." That's and then cool. went over and started talking to Paul. And you know, my chicks hitting me. Yeah. Do you know who that is? And Tommy's looking at me like, <laughs> "Dude, Billy Sheehan just good And I'm like, "Oh, I'm putting that one in my fucking hat totally. right there." Bye, yeah, bye. Absolutely, man. So that was pretty awesome. That was like, that was like a really. I've had a handful of moments without like blowing sunshine up my own keister, yeah. where. It's really like pinch yourself gratitude. Like, I'm just like, holy crap, man. If nothing else, Billy Sheen told me I was a great bass That's player. all you need, man. You could take that to the grave. You know, man, the times that I talked to him, he is one of those guys too that, although he's not of this earth, right? But he is down to earth, man. The guy is really- he's Like a really humble. super down to earth, like really easy to talk to guy. And from what I can tell too, Paul is the same way, man. I've not hung with Paul, but he seems so down to earth. And Paul he, just, he, you know, God. Paul is a giant, like the rest of us. He's a huge music fan. Yeah. First and foremost, he is still like, has that childish wonderment about music That's that crazy, I think man. all like real, you know, he's like a dyed in the wool. Like, got to do it. Or, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, I don't know what else to do. I mean, I I'm definitely going to have to marry up at some point. Because, yeah. <laughs> you, know, God, you know, it's like, it's as, as, as I always say, it's a long way to the middle if you want to rock and roll. That's right. I, uh, man, there were a couple of actors and actresses that I talked to about during the pandemic, what their contingency plan would be, right? So if you had to find another alternative to making money during this time, because nobody's gigging right now, and um, this actress, Amanda Wiss, she was in like, uh, you know, uh, Better Off Dead and, Fred, and like Nightmare on Elm Street. And she's the sweet. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, she's the blonde gal. Yeah, she's such she, a um, sweetheart. She, she was Lane's girlfriend. B yep, yeah, that's in, right. Uh, Beth. Better Off Dead, right? Beth. Yep, exactly. Beth. Yeah, she's so, uh, so, so I hear so you sweet. and Beth aren't dating anymore. So do uh, you think it would be okay if I asked her out? Anyway, Booger. God, that's right. All of them. Yeah. But she was talking about how you know, she's very humble man and she said you know i guess i am a good typist so i could be a receptionist maybe or uh um, i don't like to drive so i couldn't do uber but you know she was it wasn't like the typical hollywood you know like well right I, right an influencer it, and yeah paul seems like the kind of guy that you would talk to and he'd just be like you know man i'll just play in my basement and just shred and just do but he, he seems to well the thing with paul is is he's such a phenomenal teacher yeah he knows how to like I, whenever I play with him, man, he always breaks shit down so well. And he has an online guitar thing right. that he does. He's probably busier now. Probably. Doing yeah. his online guitar shit. Then he, everybody's got it set up and he goes through like 
everybody's personal thing, like, and films it and goes, okay, you're good. How about doing da, 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 da? And he's really good at breaking stuff down That's cool. um, for people. And, and I mean, as, as, as phenomenal as a guitar player he is, he's a, a phenomenal teacher because I, he's had to break shit from, I mean, because look, I got chops, but I don't come from that world. Right. Yeah. Like I'm, I don't want to. No, that's not true. I don't feel the need that I have to prove anything to anybody. Sure. That like, look at my chops, look at my chops. Yeah. I'm fucking old, bro. Yeah. Well, I've no. done enough shit. That's maturity. Yeah. And it's like, no. even when I was, I mean, I did want a hot dog when I was younger, yeah. but I still always want to play for the song. Who is your who do you look up to like that? Who's a, your favorite bassist that you think, man, he plays the way I respect. Okay, well, there's dudes out there that don't get any fucking credit that have influenced me that after all, uh, like, there's the obvious guys, like the big dudes that are always on the cover of every fucking bass player magazine. They yeah. just rotate them. Sure. Obviously. But the dude that is the sneaky guy yeah. Fucking Bob Daisley, man. Oh, yeah, man. Bob uh, Daisley era? is one of the fucking most underrated bass players on the planet. And he's played with so many people. And he wrote the lyrics for all those early Ozzy, those really? first two yeah. Ozzy records. He played bass on those until Sharon didn't want to pay um, mechanical royalties. So she had Trujillo and, and uh, Puffy from right. Faith No More. So, you know, and play out, but you could, and God, bless, I love Robert and I know Robert yeah. name drop. Um, and, and I love those guys and Robert's phenomenal, but man, you can't fuck with Bob Daisley and Lee Kerslake on those. I don't give a oh, fuck. Yeah, Lee too, I don't man. give a fuck yeah. who you are. Yeah. You I can't love. fuck with those guys, man. I Those guys. And they did like Uriah Heap shit. Right. They were in fucking, you know, Bob Daisley also came back and did Bark at the Moon. You listen right. to those bass lines, you can find them on YouTube. Oh, isolated, the isolated, yeah. Isolated bass tracks. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I've had conversations with people before. They were like, oh, I won't name names. But they poo pooed Bob Daisley as whoever that bass player is on the first two Aussie records. And that's like poo pooing ACDC right. and saying that their shit's so easy anybody can play it. Guess it's what? A, try it. Play it right, motherfucker. That's right. You know what I'm talking about. Dude. Yeah, man, everybody still thinks ride. they can play it right all yeah. the time. Yeah. Oh, I got this like this. Yeah. Fuck you. You're playing it wrong, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Guilty of that? I'm totally, man. When I, I, I was like, forever until I had to what, sit down and learn this shit. You know, the magic, man, with the ACDC stuff, too, is listening to the producers. You know, and you listen to what Mutt Lang did with that band. That, yeah. dude. Holy shit. Like, you know, obviously he's got the paycheck, so he's not like, he's, oh, not, yeah. he's not feeling underappreciated, you know? Oh but no, that guy's worth gazillions. Unbelievable. Pyromania, or like, I mean, uh, Pyromania yeah, well, like, and like, you know, the Bon Jovi stuff and all those. Yeah, all that shit. All that. that guy's like, you know, but what although, although some people will argue that he single-handedly destroyed Nashville, but whatever. Yeah. What he did with ACDC is just, it to me, it's like a weird magician thing. You know, it really is. And I, Same with I mean, Def Leppard, I think. Yeah, yeah, man, it's it's the truth. I mean, but I, honestly, yeah. High and Dry oh. is one of my favorite ACDC records. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> God. I'm waiting for it. I, I uh, love that record, though. Yeah, High and Dry is Okay, great. now, yeah. not to get too OCD, but I've been... So, I have been... Here's another bass player that influenced me. Okay. Um. Oh, and I'm going to forget his last name. And this is, like, so indicative. But uh, Scott, whatever his fucking name was from Loverboy, that bass player from oh, Loverboy, right. listen to the, And I think Mutt Lang might have produced indeed, one indeed. of those records. Indeed, listen indeed. to those first two. The bass, he must have been like a founding band member or something yeah. in that because the bass is so loud in those songs. That's and true. I've been yeah. listening to them. And, you know, I thought about it. And I was like going. I've been listening to those first two records a lot lately. Cause I go on these like little tirades. Like yeah. I went on a Billy Squire kick for a while oh, too. Dude, like I just, sick. I get on these kicks. Of, I went on a, I went on like a, a two, like a, a nah, three, four week cure thing where I only listen to the cure like nonstop every yeah. day. Just 
like whatever that's all like i'll just digest like you know an artist for a while and just like really soak up a bunch of shit and pick stuff apart which is because i'm a big music geek i like have so much useless information no but that's but good. um but that's that a, scott i uh what's his name it's like from Leverboy. yeah I, yeah i wish scott i knew Scott thomas he him. passed you know you know he passed away on the boat yeah, it was in the dude. Boating. What a crazy yeah. story! Right? Yeah, like the boating accident. I know that's a dude. If you're, a if rogue you're go, wave swept him out in the fucking bay. If you're gonna go, you know, in rock and roll, that's one of the ways, man. That nobody. I don't know. To I'm gonna go with one. John Entwistle, dude. Hookers and cocaine. Yeah, man. But that's been done so many times. You want to go on a wave? But not, not, like, not in your sixties. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Are you an Entwistle fan? I am an Entwistle. Appreciate admirer okay yeah appreciator right. my thing is with a lot of bass players and i think and there was a handful of them that like when i was younger you know we talk about not having to prove anything well, when you're younger you want to you want to show everybody how fast you can run of jump course. Kick. yeah right um i would there was a hand like dudes that i tried to emulate uh, but i i also got wise after a while and went you know there's already, these guys already exist. Right. Yeah. Cause I remember thinking like, like this dude like owns a Rickenbacker and all he can play is rush tunes. I'm like, right. It seems very limiting to me. Sure. Yeah. Unless you're going to be in a rush um, tribute. You know, it's just like, there's already I, one, I, one Getty. I, yeah. There's already one. And yeah. it's like, I don't want to be him. My nose is itching. Sorry. No, it's all right. At least, you know, it's, it's not... weird having this. Uh, I actually trimmed a bunch of it off. It was getting crazy. Man. Shaggy. No, this is good. Yeah. I... Well, you know, I just, I got bored and people are like, oh, you know, I usually don't like beards, but it kind of works on it's, you. It's sexy, man. All the ladies are loving it. I'm sure. I guess. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Whatever. I think I look like a fucking baby Sasquatch, but whatever. <laughs> That's the next band mate, band name, baby Sasquatch. Baby Squatch. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I yeah. uh, well, I asked about Ant Whistle because I, dude, I hate to admit it, man, but I, I piss the Ryan Morris of the world off by saying that I'm not a huge Keith Moon fan, you know? Well, but, here's the thing. You don't have to be a fucking Keith Moon fan. Sure. I mean, There's like, so many drummers out there. So sloppy windmill flailing shit isn't your style. But if it's you go, no big deal. I can see that. I appreciate Phil Rudd. I'd rather listen to like that yeah, than me. that. Me too. You know? uh, yeah. I mean, and, and Bonham more than any of them. Right. Because I want to feel it, man. I just yeah. don't want, I don't want to have to think about it. I don't want it to distract me from I get it. the root, you know, I but listen, listen, yeah. I love Stuart Copeland. Yeah. Me too. But I also really, you know, like your fucking four on the floor motherfucking, yeah. you know, honestly, Copeland, I think Ian, to me, I like think Ian, Ian Pace is a pretty underrated drummer oh, from Blue yeah. Purple. You know what? He's underrated unless you're a drummer, and then everybody knows. Exactly. Right? You know, like exactly. That, you know, um, but that's like Bob Daisley. You know what I mean? Sure. So bass players are really yeah bass players that know they know how yeah like, he was, um, man. You know, from that era too. You know, the early like late seventies, early eighties, that seminal rock sound. There are a couple of those core guys, man, that are on so many of those records that just don't get you know, like the appreciation. They weren't in Hit yeah. Parade or in Circus Magazine the way the other guys right. were. They didn't look the same, you know? Right. But, and and Sheehan, I'm not going to dog Sheehan because he's amazing, dude. He's oh, like, unreal. But, but he's so musical that I think of him outside the core bass, you know, like a rhythm section. Yeah, I don't think he's, of Sheehan he's part not of really, he's, he's beyond a bass player. Yeah. And, he's and, kind of like his own, um, He's like his own little nebulous, you know what I mean? And if you listen to his bass tone, he eats up all the frequencies. Right. He yeah. leaves about that much for the guitar player. Right. Yeah. Because he is a lead bassist. He really is. Yeah. It, yeah. It, you can have Sheehan on his own. And I love it. Listen, guitarist. I love hammer ons, but yeah. I, my love of hammer ons came from Eddie Van Halen. Sure. Yeah, man. Because, you know, it's funny. It's like people are like, oh, what were your, like, I think about it now. It's like, honestly, I wanted to be, um, I wanted to be Eddie Van Halen and David Lee Ross. Oh yeah. I could see that in you. And Michael sure. Anthony. Yeah. Like I wanted to be all those. Why not Alex? I love Alex Van Halen. Oh, Another my. underrated. I Your brother's too. Eddie Van Halen. Nobody's going to pay attention to you. That's the truth. Except man. for drummers. Right. Every drummer knows. Drummers know. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 
That, he's like <laughs> Ginger Baker meets John Bonham, kind of. For sure. For to me, because he'll play that that crazy jazzy Ginger Baker shit, yeah, like yeah. the light up the sky kind of right. like got got just think about it, yeah, yeah, all that crazy. But then he'll fucking lay down a fucking run in with the devil groove. Yeah, yeah, and the sound that you cannot hear a Van Halen song if you just listen to isolated drums. The first oh. snare, the snare drum, you know, is Alex Van Halen every time. You know, he. Yeah. That's a cool thing about drums is, you know, like every time you hear a bottom groove, you always know it's bottom, even not just from the groove, but the sound of the drum, you know, there it's rare to find band you know, like musicians, drummers that have such a distinctive sound. Really. It's a yeah. brand, you know, well, any, I mean, that's the thing. I yeah. mean, you either have to be like the perfect chameleon or just have your own thing dialed in so fucking hard that people go, I want that. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, speaking of chameleons, I'm psyched about this. I mean, I, I got your, your bro, Dean Castronovo tomorrow, right? Yeah. So Dino can play anything and everything. Oh yeah. But then Wednesday, the ultimate chameleon on drums, freaking Kenny Aronoff, man, is on my show. Right. So I, but uh, he's even got his sound though. I well, mean, he is the chameleon, but I parts, think when you hear him, you hear him. But I, in one year, in the span of a year, I saw Aronoff play with Melissa Etheridge, Smashing yeah. Pumpkins and Michelle Branch. Right. I mean, there's nothing that he can't do. Right. And if you hear him in those environments, it's completely for the song, completely for the band. This that's, is not for Kenny, man. I mean, this, you know, it, it's. Uh, that's why he gets the gigs. It's and, he, and he probably learns shit like that. So fun. for a drummer, yeah. if you can have a steel trap member, that's the thing with Dean, man. I've played with yeah. Dean a bunch of times. Yeah. And that guy can hear something one time. Yeah. And just be like, okay, got it. Yeah, his computer is different than everybody else's. It's not. I know. Oh, and you then, and then, you and then, click your and then he, just like Dino. And then right he there. sings, and you're like, "Fuck oh, you!" I know. And then he'll go like. The funny thing is, him is I, I learned it at a young age because I'm, I'm the Salem guy. I knew yeah. him when I was a teenager. Yeah. And and he's the type of guy that'll go like, "Oh, what's this? A bazooki? Huh?" <laughs> <laughs> Can he cool. do that? Yeah. And I'm like. Uh. Yeah. Fuck. yeah. Yeah. You know, some of us sell the, our souls to the devil, man. He's got it. You know, he, uh, I can't wait to catch up with him too, because you know, like you dude, I, I get to see you once every few years, it seems like, you know, and we'll be running. Yeah. We had a busy year last year. I, I mean, I didn't play nearly as many shows as you did, but it was the busiest year of my life. And this was yeah. even slated to be busy. It's like a total, year. like somebody just hit the brakes. Cause we were like, okay. I was like, we're going to get a break at some point. We got the break from the Corona. Yeah. And the first two months I was like, cool. Can we get a vaccine? I'm ready to go back to work. Big and time. now I'm just like, dude, I got a tan. I'm 10 yeah. pounds lighter. I've been running. Heavy. God, that's. I just mowed the lawn and like. Yeah. That's domesticated for sure. Did you unpack your bag? Cause you have a I bag, right? Un- like- I always unpack my bag. See, I, I have, pack my bag the next day almost every time. Every time, okay. Even if I'm home for five days, yeah, and I gotta leave again, I'll still fucking unpack my bag. That's all right. I I always keep one packed. I mean, other than clothes, but I've always got. I like, can't because I sweat so much and oh. I have sweaty, disgusting gig clothes. Yeah, dude. That it's like that's why I'm to the point now. It's like okay, I just need to get really ripped and buffed and skinny like the other dudes in my band. Who are just natural twigs. They are. It's true. And, and I'm like, I'm all. I just need to get like that, so I don't have to bring. I can. I can bring like a vest and just take it off, and I can wear right. the same vest for like three songs, and then not have to bring. Because I, I wear a shirt and I just sweat, and it's yeah. like twenty oh. pounds of sweat. You're talking my language, dude. I don't know anybody that sweats as much. It's really, really embarrassing. Oh, dude, I like, sweat like a priest in the boys' locker room. <laughs> Oh, God. I, I'm a hugger too, man. So after the shows, oh. want come, they want to come up and hug you. And I'm like, Hey, listen, just so you know, man, I'm, I'm so nasty. And they're like, no, 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 I it's always, cool. And then, Oh God. Yeah. You are sweet. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a sweater I too. You, I told them, you know, but I, uh, I'm missing the hugs, you know, I really, I miss that almost as much as the gigs, but, but I yeah. don't. Yeah. No, the gigging needs to happen. I know. We, uh, you know, for, you mentioned that you had a whole bunch of gigs lined up too, right? For this year. Are oh you, yeah. Are you, We've already, are you doing any like driving gigs or any fly out stuff for, for yeah. the next few months? Okay. I am at the end of the month. I'm going up to, um, I have to get a, uh, 
what I so I'm leaving on the 29th or the 30th. I'm going up to Alaska for two shows. I have to get a COVID test. Wow. Okay. Because Alaska is very like yeah. isolated. Keep it away. Um, I, they want. I have yeah. to get a, yeah. I have to get a COVID test, and um, I have, and I have to do it. I can't do it more than five days before I leave. Okay, so you got to do the rapid I, one. To get I ready. have to, and then I got to print it out and show up with my test. And so I just went to my my healthcare provider, and they made an appointment. But I'm going to a drive-through place on the 25th, okay, and then they're just, gonna go and like jam something up my fucking brain. And right. then I, I think they my chart me, and then I'll print it out from the my chart. And then I when I get to the airport, I got to present it. So we're doing two shows in Alaska. And what are the gigs? And are I'm they drive-ins? I didn't check the, but I'm sure they're outdoors. Yeah. And um, you know, I I you know, I I'm I'm I, I really like I need to work. I know I'm not like completely like I'm not completely in a lurch, but I'm doing my taxes right now. And oh, yeah. you know how um and I have them take like the without getting into my business, yeah. I have them take the full amount out so I don't sure. have to sweat paying in later but my health care provider you know you have to guesstimate how much you're making and it's a right. sliding scale even if you don't use your health care all year or right. maybe four times so i know i'm gonna have to pay a fucking chunk in because i made way more than i guesstimated sure well you did a lot and of i'm still playing paying what i think is too much for health insurance oh uh, yeah even without and i'm just like oh my god so i i actually set a chunk of money aside but having said that i know i'm gonna have to pay a chunk of money in that's and nice. um which is bullshit so can we please like fix the fucking healthcare system i was just gonna and say maybe we're like one i got a buddy who's a doctor who's even like yeah that's fucked up oh he's yeah seen, well, he's he, not you know he, he looks at like because he had to go get some without naming names or blah 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 he had to get some stuff done and he they messed up and because he's a doctor so he doesn't yeah. pay for it his, yeah. his hospital pays for it they accidentally charged him and he saw what the charge was uh, yeah and he was just like are you kidding me yeah yeah what the fuck and i go yeah it's like <laughs> the, oh those uh 350 screws for the right. space shuttle yeah like if you I, don't I, if you don't spend it you don't get it again so they overinflate everything and it's yeah. like this stupid fucking I, I was just thinking about before we started talking live, you know, we were saying all the things we really weren't going to cover just because for me, dude, my anxiety starts to go flying through the roof, man. And when I think about the medical stuff, I showed my doctor one of the bills because I said, man, I appreciate you making the recommendation, but because it's elective, this is what's going to cost me. And he's like, you've got to be kidding me, man. And I was like, dude, I, you didn't know that's how much it was. Cause even the doctors don't know that. I, yeah. I mean, they're not seeing that at the end, you know, that they're, they're doing okay, but if they got what we were paying, it'd be a totally different story. Yeah. I know it's pathetic and embarrassing, well, but I, you know. I have friends. It's funny too. Cause you know, I travel a lot. I have yeah. friends, you know, Europe. fucking worldwide. I don't, I don't just live in Salem, Oregon in this myopic, yeah. Fucking little tiny toilet turd of Fox News and fucking stupidity. <laughs> oh, I, uh, but we're not getting into that. Well, I actually but, have a world. I have a passport. But, I had to get pages added to my passport because I've been to so many places and seen so many different cultures and styles. And I have friends who live in countries and and they look at me and they go, so why are Americans so afraid of free health care? And right. I go we're not big business runs everything and yeah. they bent us over a barrel and they're fucking the money out of our ass and then making us pay for it. Big business and it controls Congress and that goes through the whole political system. Yeah. You know, with, and I think talk, every fucking politician needs to, it's like a fucking NASCAR fucking car. Right. You got to wear a patch by who the fuck is your the fucking pay. sponsor. So we know when you go up there like, yeah. trying to get some bullshit fucking going, we know fucking why you, Face. There you go, man. I, you know, I do a lot of apologizing for being an American. You know, when they go to I Europe, don't. yeah. Well, I just not, go, yeah, we're fucking stupid. What do I'm you not, want? I don't vote this in. I don't vote that. I don't make that decision. We play Canada a ton. Uh, actually, we played so many shows I love in Canada. Canada. It's amazing, man. But when I go up there, it's interesting how many people outside 
the country, as you talked about, I mean, you go to Europe, you go to Canada, you go to Asia. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Thailand last year, you know, and while Thailand is not a democracy at all, no. I still I look at the way though that they handle taking care of their people, you know, and even with a king and that kind of dictatorship, the people are still really well taken care of. In Bangkok, man, they haven't had deaths in a long time from the coronavirus. And it's not because of the reporting. Well, they, you saw what Vietnam did. It. They jumped on it so fast. Dude. Vietnam shut the border off yep. with where are they who are they border with China or Cambodia? Thailand. The Cambodia yeah, yeah, and yeah. Thailand. They yeah. shut the border off and they have buildings specifically for coronavirus. Right. And they actually put like military dudes out there. So in case you scream, but my freedom, you try <laughs> yeah. to fucking run out because this is a fake man. Right. And you try to run out. <laughs> Yeah, people are less likely and inclined to do that. And so they keep all those people in one area until so everybody's not mixing. If you right. if they test you and you have it, you yeah. go to the infirmary and so yeah. you get rid of it or die or whatever your fucking fate is. Part of the but plague. Yeah. Not here, man. My freedom. F R E E D U M B. Yeah, buddy. This is give me liberty or give me death. Uh, we, this could have been a whole other segment that we could have had, you know. But I um. It's called Angry Kelly. I love it. This is I good, man. Eat. I, I might will. Grab some, I might grab here. Let's take a trip. Well, you know what we should do is um the next time that we get a chance to rap. I'm going to get one of your ensembles together. One of the bands, I want to like lump a few of you guys, even if it's Dino together, I want to watch you guys go at it. Cause I don't know. I think Dean might be the only guy that I know that has more energy than you. Even the two of you together. Oh, Dean, Dean, I'm, Dean I'm, makes me look like, uh, Dean's like the puppy man. And I'm like the, uh, the old hound on the porch. Yeah. Dean. I do have energy. I do, I do have a lot of energy. I love it's, it. It's, true. it's in, it's empowering. I'm very, I'm a very passionate person. You know, oh, I love the destroyer picture back there. That's awesome. Nice post. You know what's funny is? Yeah. Oh, look at that's a painting. Is you can that... thank Dean, you can thank Dean Castronovo for that. Oh, no way. Are you serious? That's Bob cool. Rowe gave me that. Yeah. He really he is amazing, man. I, I love yeah. that. He I, gave me that. Um with uh in, well, i had mark shulman on the other day too right oh so yeah another, I know. Another he's cat. a great drummer that guy's a great drummer too wicked drummer and you know he has a ton of energy but it's it's in metered levels and so he does like kenny he's a public speaker does like keynote speaking right so he'll go into like microsoft and he'll talk to all the cfos really? and he goes, yeah and he because i mean to, to make a, a story short he didn't talk about it on the show but he i remember him telling me that he was getting ready for this huge 18 month share tour years ago and they were all getting ready to go. And then just before they went out, Shara said, you know what? I'm just not, not feeling up to it. And he all of a sudden had to pivot. And he'd been really into looking at these evangelicals and these guys that are up there empowering people, the Tony Robbins kind of vibe. Wow. And so he studied all of those cats. And then he goes out and he does these major corporate events where he'll go, he'll bring a drum kit in and he sent, he'll, it'll be kind of like a drum clinic meets a Tony Robbins revival workshop, right? And so on the show, a couple of days ago, I've listened to Tony Robbins. I like some of. He's amazing, shows. and you know what? Wow. You watch when and people might poo-poo that all you want, but it's all positive messaging. You right? know what? It's called contempt prior to investigation. Do a little homework, people. Yeah, well, pull it, your head it, out of your keister. Oh, it's sorry, I'm talking it's, about my mouth. Though. It's self empowerment stuff, right? And so if you're I trying agree. to improve yourself, when when Shulman came on, I said in in like this. I mean, we we've got a lot of old, funny, really dirty humor from you know drummers past, and then he immediately started talking about. Look, attitude breeds confidence. A, B, C. You do this, 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 and then all of a sudden, I'm like, Whoa. I'll, you know, I felt like going out and doing push-ups, and you know, the, for the rest of the day, I was completely charged up. And yeah, other people that watched were saying, "Man, I can't believe how much different I felt after watching and listening to that." And it wasn't the drummer hang; it was more about just pulling your head out of your ass and actually doing something productive right now in a pandemic where we could play the victim. We could talk about how, Oh, yeah. it was me, man. You know, you could have yeah, played the you victim. You want to get out of your own head, go help somebody else out. Do something nice for someone else. It That's gets you out of your it. own fucking insanity. That's it. Service, man. Honestly, just do be, be of service. That's exactly his messaging yeah. behind that. Yeah. And when you were going through your leukemia treatment, I loved that you didn't play the victim at all, dude. There was no well, way no. Was because people, you know, I mean, God, dude, I've not you play the me. victim. You fucking die. You lose. A coward right? dies a thousand deaths, man. 
whether it be cancer, whether it be the pandemic that's getting you, whether it be a breakup, a breakup that kicked your ass or taxes. Exactly. I've had them all. You and me both, man. And sometimes it's gotten the best of me early on, but I yeah, love, I can. love, the, but having the ability to sort of take a look at where you're at right now, having some gratitude for the things that you have right there within your grasp, right? A lot of the stuff that's outside your control, man, you can just let go, you know? And I, uh, I let I, go, I, let God, man, it's so tough. So tough. It Dude, really is. Especially right now. I mean, I, I, I honestly feel sorry for like kids, like little kids and shit right now. Yeah. I mean, granted, you know, you can throw them in front of a TV and shit, but it's like, man, this is the time to be social. Like right? miss, missing birthday parties, yeah. missing fucking like so many kids. I have friends whose kids were graduating that like yeah, my son and they were just like, no, yeah. oh, and I'm like, my... I'm all, you know, there's going to be so many makeup graduation parties, hopefully next year or sooner. <laughs> you know, man, I, yeah, my, my son, he's the sweetest kid, dude. And he, he finally got the guts up to do the prom this year for a senior year. And then prom disappeared right at the last minute, no graduation, no 18th birthday. Right. And he's such a good kid because he's so sweet, dude. He wanted to do this mission with his buddies to go to Mexico and build houses for these kids. Wow. More bummed out that he missed spring break to go to Mexico to build houses for this family. He said, dad, these families don't have a house because of coronavirus and nobody's helping him out. That's a good kid. Dude, he is. And he I must just, take after his mom. Yeah. And like, I don't know. She, she's wonderful, but I don't know where we both got so lucky with this kid. But, you know, I looked at all those other families. We went did the drive through graduation thing, you know, and yeah, man, people that, you know, had families that were going to fly in from all around the world, you know, downtown Julie Brown, man. I, I don't know if you saw the, um, the talk that I had with her, She's the sweetest chick on the planet. And she lives in on Lake Como, Italy. She, she and her husband took out this whole huge um, grove of trees out in front of their house to get her daughter married out in front of her house on, in front of the lake in Italy. And the coronavirus came. She couldn't come over. So she got married by herself on the beach in Florida. And Julie's like, well, you know, like I got to see her via FaceTime, you know, but we could all play the victim. Or yeah. we, we could take whatever opportunity we have right now, overcome adversity, work through, you know, be productive and, you know, grow our beards out and, and reconnect with friends online, you know, and plan out gigs with Mike Skill and whatever else we can do. Uh, yeah, I am so grateful, you know, just to get an opportunity to talk to you more because it's always like 15 minutes max here and there. Well, it's always like, yeah, or, or there's a band Dude. playing and we can't talk. Yeah, it's loud and, and everybody else wants to talk to you. You know, so um, tomorrow, I'm sure Dino and I will have a little heckle and laugh about Kelly Lemieux and all the crazy. Oh, stuff that you guys, go ahead, do it. You, you guys have some history, man. So. Me and Dino got some funny stories. I bet. Um, I yeah, yeah I yeah, give I, me one of those. He and Jeff Horton, aka Jeff Marks from the okay. Wild Dogs, smuggled me into the first bar I ever went into in in. Monterey, I think it was in Monterey, California. Okay. I had never, ever been in a bar before I was 19. And we had okay. this gig. We opened for Starship. Oh, and you we had this. Eight? Yeah. Was, so was Matt singing then at the band? No, it was this other no. cat from Salem who like kind of paid us all to go do this thing. Okay. All right. And so, you, you know, for getting, Starship. getting paid at like, you know, 19 to go do this thing. It was another band I had that was short lived. And, and ironically, I got, I was the, I got fired and I just laughed because I wrote all the songs and I was like, you're firing me. Okay. And then the band. singer fired everybody else, hired me, oh, Dean and God. Jeff back. And then we went and opened for Starship. We we're the first band on, but they smuggled me into this and Jeff Horton and I, I kept getting Midori sours oh, and no. I was getting really drunk. I called them green things. Yeah. One more green things. Me and Jeff oh, were just God. getting hammered, calling them green things. Can we have another good? It was a good time. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. That's about as far as I'm going to go. I'll let Dean finish the let's story. Just say, let's just say some of us got more lucky than others. Yeah, nice. At 19 in Monterey. All right. That uh, that, that I appreciate having Underaged been. in a bar in Monterey, California. With Dino, the greatest With Dean and Jeff. Yeah. Oh, and then, God. you know, yeah, yeah. I just, I've known, you know, I saw Dean when he was in uh, The Enemy. Oh, wow. Early, there was a place early called days. the White Coaster, I believe, in Salem. Okay. I mean, I think Elvis Costello played there in like 78 or wow. 
shit. Like they used to have like national acts would drop into there. So I think I feel like that's what it was called. Anyways, they did a, he was only 16. I was like 14 or 13 or whatever. And I was like, I heard about this band. You got to see him. And that motherfucker was up there just singing, uh, playing drums and singing spirit of the radio. Like, oh my God. and I just remember yeah. going, <laughs> All right, I got a, I got a lot of work to do. Yeah, man, I th- every time I see him, I, I think but seeing him do that, yeah. was just like, fuck, this guy from Salem can do this, I can fucking do it, man. Yeah, he, you know what, he does that for a lot of people. You know, that's one thing about him. I've seen him be so supportive of kids growing up. Oh yeah, hooking them up with gear and really supporting them like emotionally. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to get off on that. I was just gonna tell you, underrated guy as well. Mickey Thomas, dude, to this day in his seventies, you said you were open for Starship. We play with him a lot with Lock. He still and nails it, huh? I can't believe it, dude. When he does Jane and Find Your Way Back, those notes a, are still there, man. There's a handful of guys that are just real, yeah, for real, fucking rock singers. Yeah, he's that dude. Robin Zander can can still sing, and he's got vibe. Dude, oh, yeah. so Steven Tyler can still fucking say. I mean, I've, I've stood. You watched, yeah. I've stood side stage and watched it. And, and I know, I know, uh, I know Dax, the drummer. Yeah. From Cheap Trick. And man, talk about sweet fucking guys. That's, I was, that's Rick's when I was kid. finished. Well, yeah, yeah. He's playing drums for him. And, yeah. and, and, and they put me on when they played with Hart and, uh, Joan Jett. Um, I, I, cause I knew Dax from LA before when he first moved to LA. Okay. When he was like 21, two, whatever the fuck he was. Wow. And, 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 um, I literally gotten out of, had just gotten out of a chemo session. I had my last, I would go Monday. Well, I was only, I was supposed to go the whole week, but my doctor was so cool. I went Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturday they were playing. At the fucking Sleepy Tom Amphitheater, or whatever the fuck it's called now. <laughs> that should be what it's called. And yeah. and and those guys, I got out of the, I got out of the chemo. Got oh, I had a chemo from midnight. I had to do two sessions from noon to two, and then from midnight to two a.m. And then they would check me out around eight thirty nine. Whenever the doctor would come in, make sure, you know you got a ride. Yeah, I got a ride. And walk to my car and drive myself home. Shit, dude. Well, whatever. God, it's, it's only chemo. It's not that big a deal. But um, he so so. Anyways, I got out of that and I came home. Tommy Pearson came pick me up. My girl was here. Aaron, um, we were dating at the time. Uh, my little we picked my little brother up and then we went there. And those guys, dude, Dax put me on full carte blanche. Nice meet and greet. Fucking came over, took pictures. Robin's like. He's like, you gonna come up and do a song with this man? Cause we've done, and I'm like, dude, I, dude, I was all chemoed out of my brain. Oh, I'm like, bro, yeah. wow. I'm like, oh, I'm all, you know what? I just want to, I'm just gonna sit and watch. Yeah. And we're up, dude. So they end up grabbing us and put us right in Rick's world. Oh, that's right cool. next to the guitar tech nice. side stage, right behind the PA. Yeah. I can see out, and and I'm just like, oh my god, and like every my brother. Aaron, my girl, at the t- and 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 uh, and uh, Tommy, and we're just like everybody's just like, oh my God, yeah. God, 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 God. I we're love throwing it. Throwing handfuls of picks at us. Oh yeah, da, 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 da. they're doing surrender, surrender. You know, before it does the fucking modulation into the right. last, yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, we're playing, and, and Rob, Robin's got his jacket with the sequins on that he's wearing, like a cape. Yeah. And he's doing surrender and I said, oh, yeah, surrender. And he fucking totally looks at me and fucking beelines right at me. He blows you a and kiss. And I'm just like, <laughs> and I'm just, no, dude, he comes right over to me and he goes, but don't give yourself away. Puts the mic into me and I go, ah, ah. Uh, and I hit the fucking harmony with him. Yes. And he looks at me and he goes, Boom, yeah. like, the fuck yeah. And he goes back <laughs> and sings the third verse. And I'm sitting there, like the 12 year old me is just yeah. fucking pissed his pants. Right. And I'm like going like, I'm already emotional because I'm going through fucking cancer. Sure. My fucking best friend, one of, you know, one of my best friends, my brother and my chick are all standing around me. And Tommy, yeah. you know, of course, is like filming everything and da da ba ba ba. 
and, and Robin walks up and I'm sitting there like this. I'm all, nobody look at me. I'm going to fucking cry. Yeah. Nobody fucking look at me. I'm going to fucking cry. And I get, and I, and I, and I stave the, 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 the crocodile tears. I suck them back up. And, I'm a pussy boy. <laughs> and I turn around and I look at Tommy and everybody's just like, Oh yeah. Dude. And I go, I look at him and I go, you didn't record that, did you? And he goes, fuck no. Oh, somebody out there has got it, man. It's on I YouTube somewhere. No, you know what? Yeah, it's all here. There's another one of those Billy Sheehan moments, man. Yeah. Doesn't... I've got a little stockpile of those that just like, just, just warm the, and, and, and fuck, I'm forgetting his name. Their tour manager, who is, I think he's the original drummer, drummer for Local H. He's their tour manager. Okay. He had colon cancer and almost died. So he was just like, whatever the fuck you need, bro. And I was just like, man. And those guys are like Midwest nice, you know, yeah, they're all man. from like Wisconsin and Illinois. Springfield, Illinois, yeah. And you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Rockfield. Rock Rockfield. Rockford? No, Springfield. Rockford. Rockford. And I think, oh, it Robin's, is. I think Robin's actually from Wisconsin. Okay. Because uh, uh, my buddy Groovy Man from uh, 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 My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult was best friends with Robin's girlfriend when he came back from Budokan. Oh wow! He goes. He goes. I was there when Robin came home from the airport. God, man, that's anyway. Uh, no, um, but, but yeah, I love Chief. That's another Tom Peterson, twelve yeah. string bass, the inventor of. Um, I love um, fucking. I um, like. I love. Like as a kid, it was like it was more about the bands at first because I learned how to play bass on the fly. I was in a band before I knew how to play. Right. The guitar player who was was twelve showed me where to put my fingers and i just automatically was like okay wow. and I, I figured it out because i'd been studying i was just been a music fan since i was a little kid That's i always amazing. knew i was gonna play an instrument of something i knew you know after i stopped growing i'm like eh, i'm never gonna get any bigger i was not gonna be a pro football player okay no basketball so, for you i am not a basketball guy man all right i yeah, mean i appreciate guy. it yeah I'm a football guy, bro. Yeah, I know. We're going to have to watch the Seahawks-Vikings game when uh, when it comes back around. I like the Seahawks, too. My yeah. main team is the Vikings, but I also like the Seahawks because I grew up, you know, I grew up before uh, the satellite hookup. Right. We yeah. moved back in 79, so I got all the Seahawks games shoved down my throat. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest with you, when I was a little kid in Minnesota, I was already getting sick of the Vikings. I had a Seattle Seahawks helmet. I still you? got it it's downstairs. Oh, my man. buddy painted over my Viking helmet. <laughs> oh, oh my god! That's I still have it downstairs. Sacrilege. Man. That I, well, yeah. we, we'll have to go to a game, man. I, I, I oh, dude, I was I, supposed I, to go last year, but the weather got crappy, and I was flying out, and I didn't want to get sick. God, I missed. I have second row of season tickets. I've had them for twenty oh, years. You're man. taking me, asshole. Yeah, absolutely. If I, there's a season, is there going to be a season? Not that uh, we can go to. No, I got the opportunity to opt out of my seats. Actually, I've had them since 2002. So 19 you years. Out? I haven't called them yet. I heard, I've been listening to the Seahawk podcast and they said that all the NFL teams are giving their season ticket holders an option to opt out. I paid a deposit and they were supposed to, on July 1st, hit everything on my credit card for all the seats. And I'm like, man, I, I don't have it in me right now, you know? And so I just paid. 400 bucks for my deposit, just, just a tiny bit to show I have four seats. So I wanted a hundred bucks a seat just to say I'm in if we can make a season, but that was four or five months ago. And now, you haven't heard anything. well, apparently they're giving, they've already made the announcement to allow people to call in and opt out. I just haven't called the Hawks yet, but there's no way with my four seats together that we would have been sitting four together anyway. Right. So they would have had seats every other three seats or something. So I uh, I don't want to take a risk. I mean, honestly, dude, I love football. I love the Seahawks. But if I'm going to spend any time around anybody in a stadium, I want to be gigging, you know? And so I am. Um, yeah, I hear that. I just, well, I'm going to tell you this. Just, for, you know, just anybody who's listening. I heard there's a couple of companies, Pfizer and one of the other fucking something or other tech. They're in the third phase of, 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 of having a fucking, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I've heard that too, but I know it means. But I've heard it from a doctor. Okay. Yeah. Well, who I mean, seems with, very op fairly optimistic, but when Fauci do, comes in and says it, you know, do 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 you what's that? When Fauci comes and says, "Hey, we got this thing," then you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll believe it. You know? Um, um, I agree, but um, 
you know, and he's, he's, he's in a, a ER and he's an ER doctor in, in Tampa. And he's just like, he goes, it's a fucking war zone there right now. Yeah. That's scary. That's stuff, why man. I laugh at all these fucking deniers. Maybe. I've actually had people here go. Cause I was like, Oh, I said something about wearing my mask. And they're like, do you even know anybody that's had it? And I'm all, where do I fucking yeah. start? I know no, people no. that I know people who know people that have died from it. You know what, dude, right at the beginning of this pandemic, that first week of March, we were booked to go out on the eighties cruise again in the Bahamas. Right. So we were actually going to fill in uh, for a bunch of bands that canceled. Brett Michaels canceled uh, cool in the gang B 52s, somebody else. And so they called us last minute threw a lot of money at us. Our singer was in Liverpool guitarist is in Toronto and there's no way logistically they could get back there to do it. Oh, is this the flock? Who with flock? And is he a Liverpudlian? Yeah, yeah. All those uh, guys were original Liverpudlians. But oh, uh, okay. In fact, today, last year, we got our pictures walking across Abbey Road. Sure. T- tomorrow, last er, this time last year, we were playing the Cavern Club, man. You know. And, oh wow. And, um, but that cruise came back, and uh, so many people from the cruise had the virus. And I didn't hear about mutant, like friends of mine that passed away, but a bunch of the bands got sick. The friends of mine in New York, actually, um, Jesse's Girl was a cover band that actually has done this gig every year. Every one of the people in the band had the virus and they were so sick for so long. And thankfully, nobody passed from the band. But yeah, I mean, anybody that has said for host, Fountains of Wayne died. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, that dude, John Crane. Yep. Yep. There's. You know, I mean, not just in the music world, but every time. Oh, no, no, no. I know. I'm just, but that's where my brand goes. Well, yeah. I know. I mean, the, the thing is, like, when people see celebrities, you know, passing away, then they kind of think that it's real. But, you know, Russell Westbrook today said that he's got it, you know, a basketball player. But, uh, but I mean, there are so many people out there getting sick. And I don't know. I have an 18 and 21 year old, you know, and my, my kid, my 21 year old was in LA all last week. He wore the mask down there. I kept seeing his Instagram pictures with his mask on for the first four days. And every picture he took, everybody in the background, not one person wearing a mask. And then he came back. He said, Dad, yeah, the last two days, I didn't wear it. He eagerly took a COVID test on Saturday. And I think he gets his results tomorrow. Did he just drive up or did he, he make did. an appointment? Yeah, no, no, no. He made an appointment. I made an appointment oh. for him when he was driving back because I said, dude, I don't want you coming in the house and bringing this yeah. my way. And he said, yeah, I'll take a test, man. And I'll quarantine my room if you need me to. And I gladly did. But he said, um, there's one day that Santa Monica beach opened up and he said, we went down early in the morning and they hadn't announced that it was open. So we're hanging on the beach. And then everybody in LA found out that the beach was open. So he said, millions of people show up at the beach, no, nobody wearing masks and everybody crowded. So he split and uh, you know, we all have friends that own businesses, dude. And we all have an opportunity to get out there once the vaccine comes. But if people just did their part, We'd all be working and living. Yeah, I, I don't drink alcohol, so I don't go to bars anyways. I feel like a lot of the people are just like fucking burnt and lonely. And yeah. ooh, I mean, I miss my friends, man. Yeah, you know? right. But, yeah. but not enough to want to kill them, you know? <laughs> like, I'm yeah. not, well, I'm not going to fucking, you know, I, I, I actually, in my neighborhood, I, there's a, a sushi place I love and they opened up outdoors, but it's like the seats are far apart. Yeah. That's pretty much the only place. Usually I just order, you know, I order and go pick it up or, yeah. you know, if, I, if I'm going, but I did go there and it was really freaking weird. Yeah. To just, like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm sitting. Cause it was one of the last places that I went with my friend that I went with. It was one of the last places we went before all this shit hit. And I was like, oh, this is weird. It's like coming back to the scene of the crime. Yeah, I haven't eaten in a. Re- Actually, I did eat in one restaurant in Montana a couple of weeks ago when I was there. Oh, well, this was, was this was, yeah, this was in outdoors, but yeah, it's weird. But it was yeah, it was kind of tripping me out. Honestly, I I felt like I was just not in the right space. But let's go get yeah. some socially distant sushi. I'm I miss sushi. I haven't had it in months, and I'd love to do that with well, you. Well, you can order to to be delivered, or you can yeah, pick it well, up. But I just want to have you know, I want to be like looking at your Jack Black face in person one of these days, you know. So well, I got a I got a place that's open. The lunch special is super affordable and let's really good. Let's do it, man. And uh, what 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 nape of the neck are you in? I'm Oregon City. Oh, you so, are okay. Yeah, I'm southeast, yeah. so we're not yep. that far. Yeah, I know you're by the sausage kitchen. <laughs> so, exactly. I uh, yeah, I didn't want to give give uh, you know. That's enough. okay. Well, I'm, I'm by it. I'm well, not in. It. Yeah, well, as long as they don't give you you know free sausage, then we're not going to give them. Uh, they're actually they're actually um they own the house that I'm. Oh in. oh sweet okay yeah 
They're, I, I, and they're very awesome. The Icon Tops, they're fucking really nice, super sweet people. It's good stuff. It's I, a family run business. I think McSwain actually mentioned that he was such a huge fan of that place before. He oh my God. I can't eat it because of my, I had gallbladder issues. Oh really? Yeah. Because I ate there too much. Oh God. I blew my gallbladder. I was having issues before, but not, and it's not, just the fact with my chemo and everything too. Yeah. Just eating a lot of red meat is just like, so I'm a pescatarian, but okay. um, I'll get sandwiches from them though. They got, I got, there's one kid there, uh, Theo, that um, is one of the sandwich guys. And I will only, I text and I go, are you working today? Cause everybody else fucks my sandwich up. And I'm like, I'm not getting a sandwich unless you're making it. That's good to have the hookup, so, man. Well, let's go get yeah. sushi instead. I miss it. Let's I'm, get sushi. I love it. I, uh, uh, Did you ever sorry. see Repo Man? The movie Repo yeah, Man? Yeah, of course, De Niro, man. Let's get sushi. Yeah, let's get sushi and not pay. Yeah, that's right. Monterey, open it for Starship. Dino, and what was the band again? Ugh, centerfold that was your band that was the name of the band okay all right it was just... well it was my band like i said oh then i got only... fired right your band which, and like i laughed like i said i laughed because i wrote all the fucking music for it I and half of the, and some of the lyrics too and then um and dean was um, playing drums and then this and then the singer like came back and got us three and we were like yeah go down to monterey open for starship fuck Thank it was you. a it was a clusterfuck but it was fun and it's I, something i can laugh about i did when i was 19 i just wanted to remember and it was where they had the monterey pops because oh, it was yeah. funny because i kept i'd walk around on the stage and it would say jimmy lit his guitar here oh, um, um janice puked here like on like stage. real funny like funny yeah. little things on the stage i'm sure they were all jokey jokes but it's still pretty funny I, and I, I'll, I'll mention to Dino uh, the green things, the Midori Sours. That was Kelly. Yeah, style. I think that was more of a Jeff Marks thing. Though. Okay, all right. I don't know. But, if, I don't know if Dean would remember the green things. Well, but. Dean, Dean has enough Midori Sour stories, I'm sure, man. So oh, we'll get, he's got we'll get into those. probably stories that make me look like a schoolgirl. God, all of us, man. You know, the book that he could write. You know. But, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I'm glad to get to know Kelly Lemieux a little bit more, man. So I got uh, you, buddy. We'll uh, hopefully get out of this pandemic enough time to uh to do some rocking but you know we could play anyway socially distant so i'm gonna get a hold of skill we'll do that thing and maybe uh some live videos i got soon. i got a bunch of masks they're all cool different and unusual i got a flock of seagulls mask you can wear i'm gonna get, be getting a covid test pretty soon so yeah you know. right on yeah that's right on the 25th before your alaska gig but yeah yeah you know what, man? Do me a favor. Let me know how that gig goes. I'm interested to hear how one of my first buddies is out there doing these live shows, see how effective it was, how safe you could feel, you know, on it. And, uh, you know, tear it up, man. Give my best to Francis, too, dude. I love that guy. Absolutely. And Stevie, well, too, man. I haven't seen Stevie for a long time, but I really, I will. he's got such a good heart, man. I really, he is. I, I love the way he, like, he is such a dad first. He is such a cool dad, man. I love it. I, you know, he's like the ultimate skateboard dad, you know? So yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he, if he remembers me, man, tell him Kevin metal says, Hey, you know? I bet he does. Yeah. Where would he yeah. remember you from what band? Well, it, Cleveland, we did shows together, but I've seen him at Nam, and we've uh, like, we've got a lot of mutual He'll friends. remember because your name is, is similar to somebody else. I know. Scott Are Worthing. You, oh, what's that? Know, when, when Scott was playing drums for a little bit as well, actually, uh, uh, after he did the Everclear gig, went on to, to uh, Buck Cherry right at the beginning of your tenure, right? Or he w wasn't, uh, didn't Scott, between Xavier and Francis, wasn't Scott playing? Uh, oh, I don't know. No, okay. I, I uh, that was, uh, no, uh, uh, the, the interim drummer is uh, a cat named Sean Winchester. He was oh, Sean Winch Everclear. That's what it was, Sean Winchester. Yeah, yeah. For, okay. Okay. Um, and he, I met through Sobel as well. So I did. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, my, yeah. My, I think they're both Valley guys. God, the Sobel connection is funny too. And we'll have to talk about that a little bit. With yeah, the, with I your, really only just kind of know him through, um, he and Tommy came to one of our shows, Tommy Hendrickson, and yeah. um, they came to a Buck Cherry show. Ironically, I was wearing an Alice Cooper t-shirt on oh, stage yeah. too. And Tommy yeah. comes up to me and he goes, Hey, what was that bass you were playing? That was the, I'm all Yama. I goes, oh, like Jimmy Bain. And I oh, go, exactly. Jimmy Bain. Yeah. Like Jimmy Bain. So we kind of hit it off, Tommy and I. And then I started talking to Glenn. And then we did um, we did a Monterey, Mexico show with him too, with Alice Cooper and a bunch of other bands named Insert, insert you know, yeah, your, Def, your Def Leppards. And I think Aerosmith canceled. And then um, 
Alice ended up headlining, but I ended up hanging out and talking to talking to Glenn's super great guy. He's super he great. records at where we did our last record at um, Howard Benson's studio there in, in Woodland Hills. And he's kind of like Howard's go-to guy. He's always right. doing stuff. So now there, there's a story that I'll tell you offline about. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, about... I got some stories to tell you offline too. All right, man. Let's just do it over sushi. You want to do that? We can do that. All right. All right. I'm going to toss you a note this week. Hey, I'm Hit really, really glad to see you healthy and doing well, man. This has been so Back at you, bro. God. Uh, for those of you that are watching, I'm going to make sure that I archive this. You'll find it at kevinrankin.com. Again, thanks to Five Star Guitars for being so supportive. Of yeah. All five. five Star. You know, yeah, absolutely, Joff. man. Yeah. Joff Metz, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so find Kelly if you can. Uh, he may or may not still be on Facebook by the time you I'm get on to Instagram. this. On Instagram. Okay. Yeah. What's your Instagram handle? I think it's just, if you just Google Kelly T Lemieux. Okay. Yeah. It'll come but, right up. Just make okay. sure you put the T in there. You're going to get some hot little blonde chick from Quebec, I saw her. I which might be her. better. Yeah. Well, when I first reached out to her, yeah, she, her boyfriend didn't like that. I was trying to get a hold of she her. She wasn't into it. Yeah. Well, he, he felt threatened about the podcast interview conversation I had with her, you know? So um, anyway, Kel guy. Kelly T Lemieux on Instagram and uh, yep. yeah. Man, sometimes we're... I'm on Facebook, but like, yeah, just long that's enough. a garbage. That's a trash fire, man. That's a trash can fire. Just skim. It. I only go in there when I'm in a good mood or I'm in a bad mood. Yeah, which is pretty much. Don't do it before bedtime. It just it'll keep you away. Or in the morning. Yeah, right. That's the worst. Yeah, no. Just go on to find all access live pages and fun conversations with all these great people. There like it is. Tomorrow, Dean Castro. I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna go have to go back and hit some up. Yeah, there's some good ones, man. A lot of your buddies, actually. So, um, and Dean. Oh, you're blowing up. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. Shit. Let me decline that. Sorry. Ding, 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 ding. I forgot to mute my own stuff. I don't usually do these at night. You know, usually it's at three o'clock in the afternoon. I know. I'm sorry. I, no. It's the only chance I could get to get in there. I love it. No, and this of course is good. I didn't have all the stuff I needed because you never do. No, this was perfect, dude. I loved it. Tomorrow at three, if you feel like chiming in, Dean will be on and uh, he'll tell us about his camping stories, you know? So I, uh, and I can't then, uh, wait. Yeah. Let's and then you well, next to, uh, yeah. You know, he's ask him if he saw any Sasquatch or heard any. Yeah. He probably brought one home with him, you know? Dude. So, um, dude, stay healthy. Keep wearing the you mask. Too. I love you. Hey, good luck in Alaska. Oh, and then when you hey, get back, thanks. we'll do sushi. I'm only, yeah. I'm back on the, I don't do, I mean, I'm in town for a while. It's not till the 30th or whatever. Okay. So. Then let's be bored. You want to get sushi before then? Let me know. We'll do sushi and we're going to do this live thing with Mike Skill, right? So let's do some. I'm jamming. into it. Okay. I'll have him get a hold of you tomorrow. Do it. Thanks, homie. Have a great week, man. It's really you good too, to see man. you. All you right. Too. Thanks for having me. I'll see you. Take care, buddy. Live long and prosper. <laughs>